All right, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe says there is no there there, that it must be silly season. All this scrutiny of his political action committee donating about half a million dollars to Dr. Jill McCabe, a Democratic candidate for the Virginia State Senate. Uh, she went on to lose, but people are looking back at that donation now because it so happens that she was married to Andrew McCabe, now the deputy director of the FBI and a, a key figure in uh, overseeing what the FBI was going to do about those Hillary Clinton emails. A fellow wants to get to the bottom of all of this is John Whitbeck, Virginia Republican Party chairman. But John, you have actually called for getting more information, the emails, the correspondence, the communications between the campaign and the governor, I guess. Uh, uh, enlighten me. Right. Well, you know, we've, we've made a FOIA request to the governor. We want to know what the communication was between Dr. McCabe during this campaign and Governor McAuliffe. And, you know, out of nowhere, the lieutenant governor of Virginia calls a person who's never run for office before and asks her to run for office in a district that is completely unwinnable for Democrats. And they proceed to give her, you know, almost half a million dollars out of a super PAC, and then the Democratic Party gives her over $200,000. And then that race is over, and then all of a sudden, this her husband is appointed to be the you know, second in command of the FBI and is overseeing the Clinton email investigation. So it's these coincidences that the Clintons find themselves in and our governor find himself in are just, uh, they look shady. You know, John, they come back and say uh, there was no quid pro quo. He gave, or his political action committee gave, more money to two other candidates. I don't know they're, what they won or lost, but, but it, that this is nothing special or different. What do you say? Well, you know, they had an established candidate running already in that district, probably someone who had a better chance of winning, and at least the candidate thinks so. You know, I, I, I live in Loudoun County where this district is. It's a very right. conservative district. And, you know, for them to clear the field for this particular person who's never run for office before just is one of those coincidences that the Clintons keep having happen to them. So let's play this out and what might come of your request and trying to get more information. Would it even be that blatant? In other words, in the communication, would are, are you looking for a smoking gun like someone on the governor's staff saying, do you know who her husband is or that kind of stuff? I mean, uh, short of that, you might come up empty, right? Well, I think, I, I, no, I don't think so. I think no matter what happens, if you look at the timeline of this, and, you know, and what we're hoping to do with the FOIA request is find out what Terry McAuliffe knew and when did he know it. And with this FOIA request, if we get back communications between him, his campaign, or her campaign, and in his office where they're talking about the fact that he's a high-ranking FBI official. And, you know, one of the things that created this situation in the first place that made us really question what's going on here is the denial that came out from Jill McCabe and the FBI after this happened. Jill McCabe yesterday put out a statement that you all reported where right. she basically denied that her husband had any involvement in the campaign whatsoever. The FBI then came out with a similar statement that said he had no involvement, and they were emphatic about it. Well, my staff spent five minutes on Facebook, and you can still go on Dr. McCabe's Facebook campaign Facebook right now, and you see her husband campaigning for her on Election Day. He's in mail pieces, which are... Uh, paid for and authorized by the McCabe campaign and by the Democratic Party of Virginia. He's on social media saying, write up a sign that says why you're voting for my wife. And that's fine in, in normal cases for a spouse to do that. That's expected. But when Dr. McCabe and the FBI both say unequivocally he had nothing to do with this campaign, we've proven that false with a very cursory review. You know, and, and, and the erosion of public trust in the FBI leadership is really what's issue, at, at issue here. And this is just another example of this. But is it and affecting polls and other ones I look at seem to put the state out of reach for, for Donald Trump? Maybe I'm reading it differently. Uh, and he, he's even withdrawn, you know, monies from the state himself, thinking that maybe it's a lost cause. What are you hearing? Well, I mean, that was an erroneous report that they had withdrew resources. In fact, he invested $2 million in, in ads. He's running TV ads nonstop in Virginia right now. But the polls look pretty tough still, don't they? Well, you know, they look tough for Republicans miraculously every year. In 2013, our governor's race, Ken Cuccinelli, was down by double digits going to Election Day and barely lost. And Mark Warner, the invincible United States <laughs> senator, almost was beat by Ed Gillespie, who's now running for governor. Oh, you're right about that. I forgot about that. I mean, and, and that was that was a double-digit lead by Mark Warner going to election day. So you think it's still winnable? You think it's still winnable? Well, you know, I don't think anybody knows in 2016 what's going to happen. I think states are in play that aren't necessarily in play. Virginia's always winnable for Republican. We're a swing okay. state. We're still a swing state. All right. We'll see what happens, John. Thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir.